for recent news that she has a benign brain tumor, everything she told me seems to have new meaning. Happy birthday. Thank you. What are the uh, advantages and the disadvantages of this birthday, of being 65? Still being alive is an advantage. Is it a good time in your life? Very. Then we sat down in her living room to talk. Elizabeth had her pal Sugar on her lap. Is this the current love of your life? Would you like to introduce us? This is the love of my life. Uh -huh. For five years, my constant companion. Uh, she's had a few tears shed on her shoulder. Elizabeth, you have said that your career doesn't matter to you very much now, that your focus is AIDS. It really is. Mind you, I think my uh, career isn't sort of a focal point in anybody else's mind either. I don't think I could get a job if I wanted one. I use my fame now when I want to help a cause or do things for others. It had hit your own family that your former daughter-in-law, um, Aileen Getty, had uh, aged through a blood transfusion. How is she doing? Well, uh, she's doing remarkably well. In the beginning, she said it was through a blood transfusion, but actually um, she had... Um, an indiscreet affair for like a weekend mm. with the wrong person and I caught AIDS. And here it is part HIV. of your own. You're working in AIDS and it's in a lot and you didn't have any peers. Uh, I didn't go to football games or proms or any of that kind of thing. It was only later that I thought Wow, I really haven't had any preparation for the outside world. It was the loneliest, one of the loneliest periods of your life. I think Washington for women is a desperately lonely city, uh, especially if you've been active all your life. Because if you're a politician's wife and don't have your own role, there's nothing for you to do except be supportive. And sometimes I didn't agree with all the issues. And so, you know, I really had to kind of keep my mouth shut. In the end, the marriage didn't work. All the illnesses caused you to take a certain amount of drugs and more and more. Did you know that you were becoming addicted? Probably in the back of my head. Mm. Um, I'm not stupid. And it sort of eased more than physical pain. And the drinking? That was to blot everything out. How bad was the addiction? How much was the drinking then? Do you remember? I concealed it quite well. I had, I used to pride myself on having a, a wooden leg because I was not a fall-down drunk. Uh, but I consumed inordinate amounts of alcohol. And combined with pills, it was deadly. When you decided to go to Betty Ford, you were, I think, the first major celebrity to do that. Um, people were shocked. People thought it would be the end of your career. It took enormous courage. Well, I knew I had to do something or I would die. You came out of Betty Ford, had a very good five years, at least so it seemed, then had a relapse and went back in again. I thought I could start drinking again, and I went to Mexico, and those little uh, pineapples with umbrellas on in the hot sunshine just look so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have another. It, yeah. And then, like, uh, it turns into a bottle of wine, and I thought, whoops. At Betty Ford, the second time around, you met an attractive, very different kind of man for you, Larry Fortensky. What did it give you? Larry is a very sweet, kind, funny man, and I was so proud when he kept on working as a construction worker, and he had his own sense of self. And then it just all started to change, and it got all blurred. And I think uh, my hip surgeries were very hard, on him. He just really couldn't kind of cope with it. As you tell me this, you're blaming yourself. 
because I don't want to blame him. We just stopped communicating. You never took alimony? No. Now you're paying a settlement. This is a little hard for me. And he wants more yeah. because he wants to live in the style that you made him accustomed, made him accustomed to. I think he's probably been ill-advised and got, uh, some lawyers have gotten a hold of him and said, you know, screw her for as much as you can. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm not going to lay back and say, uh, just take whatever you want. Uh, there's a certain amount I have in my mind that I think is appropriate. And I will stick out for that. But you have said that you love being in love, that you always want to be in love. I've been in love so many times, I think I've had it. <laughs> what about marriage? Oh, God, no. Really? You've said that before. I know, but I really mean it. Okay. If you hear of me getting married, what do I do? slap me. In a lifetime marked by constant turmoil, one relationship that has never changed is her friendship with Michael Jackson. She has remained loyal to Jackson through all of his difficulties. One of the reasons I think Michael Jackson and I are so close, because neither one of us had a childhood, and uh, we can relate to that and wonder at how we got by. And he's going to have a family, and I think it's great. Are you going to be godmother to the baby? Yes. I think it's great. For 55 years, we have indeed been entranced and surprised by Elizabeth Taylor. Roddy McDowell thinks he knows why. There's been so much agony in the life and so much glory. She's become a, a part of our family. That happens with certain people whose careers are so enduring. It's very warming to know they're there and to be able to care about them. There have been so many lessons, life and death lessons, emotional lessons. I don't believe in regrets because I'm here today. I'm alive. I have my friends. I have my children. And I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. No one does. Mm -hmm. And, and take believe. each day? Take each day as it comes. And if it's a bad day the next day, just hang in.